Hey, Rotation was awesome. November the 6th, last video. If you haven't watched it yet, finish watching this video and go back and watch that video. Big buck, down. So, all eight days or whatever it was leading up to that that I'd had off, the weather was horrible. It was windy, it was hot, movement wasn't great. The deer were wanting to move, but they just weren't comfortable moving as hot as it was. So, I was lucky to get that deer in the middle of that bad weather, 75 degrees and windy the night I shot him, and the pressure was off. People always give me a hard time about that. You don't have to be pressured when you're deer hunting. Just go enjoy it. Well, I do. Don't get me wrong. I do love sitting in a tree. I like going out and being in the timber in the off season. But the way I take whitetail hunting, it's a challenge that I put on myself to go fill a tag on a mature deer. So with that comes some pressure. It's a goal and there's pressure to meet that goal. So anyway, after killing that deer, some of that pressure was gone. And I took Saturday and Sunday off to sleep in really, to get my gear reorganized because that turns into a friggin' disaster in the back of the truck when you're hunting hard. Uh, the all day sits had worn me down, so I just kind of, I watched football is what I did, go Steelers. What are you doing? You kick the field goal. You go up by eight. What are the Steelers coaches using common core math or something? I knew that crap would ruin the entire world and this game. So Monday, the weather still wasn't great, but I had decided to go back after the deer I was hunting initially. Uh, the beginning of my vacation, the first five or six days, I hunted one deer really, really hard. Started to feel the burn, jump properties, killed that other buck. So I'm like, cool, got one. Let's go finish what we started with this deer. See what happens. So Monday morning, not much. Monday evening, not a whole lot. Nice young buck comes by, cruises right by. It's really cool to look at. And saw a couple of does getting close to dark, but they seem to be by themselves. They were just kind of hanging out at 20 yards. But it is at this point, November the 9th. So surely there's something behind them. Now well, sure enough, it starts to get dark and I hear a deer coming in behind them. I hear grunting and it's just taking its time, taking its time. And the way it was acting, I knew it was most likely mature. It wasn't bum rushing these does. It was just doing its thing. The deer comes in, you can hear it right here. He's at 15 yards. It is the deer I've been hunting. And he's a solid, probably 160s stud looking deer. There he is, been hunting hard. Here he is at 15 yards. It's the third time I've seen him. Two glimpses that I couldn't even get on camera. And then this one after, you know, last light. So I still can't get him on camera, but he's right here. And I'm looking at him with binoculars and decide at that point, he is as big as I thought he was. However, I don't think he's as old as I thought he was. Pressure's decent in this area. He might not live, but at that point, I decided I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be the one to kill him this year. I'm gonna walk away, cross my fingers that he survives. I've got a stud of a deer on this other property still that I haven't put any pressure on yet. Got great weather coming up, so I'm just gonna bail. I'm gonna go hunt that other deer, let this guy go. Roll into Tuesday. That morning was pretty slow. And after that morning hunt, the storms started coming in. And when I say storms, I mean it for November. It was freaking wild. You guys can see this. It's just blasting in. We got, I would bet, an inch of rain. And I don't know, I don't got a rain gauge. I made that number up. We got a lot of rain though. However, that storm was really good news. One, because as soon as that rain stopped, there was deer everywhere. I was out driving around. I sissy dad didn't get in a tree, but I was out checking fields and checking little areas. I drove around some public ground, just seeing what was going on and did see a lot of deer, which told me that what we expect after a big front, they're gonna be on their feet. And what makes that even better is that that night, Tuesday night, it got cold. And so Wednesday morning was gonna be 30 degrees, really calm, slight Northwest wind. That gives me the perfect wind for the perfect stand to hunt this deer. So Wednesday, that's where I'm at.
found a toad laying in there. It sounded like he did. And uh, he called that buck in, so that's kind of what I was waiting for. But I was hoping the one that he called in was a little bit older. This is still good news, because now we've got two young bucks in there that are going to start running around. Making all kinds of racket and moving all kinds of deer. Gonna be here all day. I've been sitting here for 10 minutes talking to myself. I shot him a little while ago. <laughs> so I was sitting here fucking around because I all I'd seen was those one-year-olds. And I don't know if you remember in this stand, but I can kind of see the field across this brushy draw right in front of me. It'd be to, yep, yeah, yep. So I'm just looking at that cornfield, looking at my phone. One, you know, just doing my thing, and I see a deer moving up there. I'm like, well, that looks like a buck. Lift my antlers, or my antlers, lift my binoculars. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, that's a stud. I think it's this big nine pointer I'm looking for with. He's got a bunch of junk off the bases. I have sent you the pictures. So I'm like, I think it's him. Well, I see him going across there, and it's quiet, so I get my grunt call. He's heading complete opposite direction. I grunt twice, real fast, like a chase. He turns around, comes in, destroys everything, just marches through this brush, comes in, pops out at 20 yards, and I drilled him. 
and it, it, it is him, so. So, he's laying here at 13 yards dead. I shot him, watched him. Uh, he ran a little like five yard loop, stood there and looked around, caught me in the tree as I was doing my thing. I was getting another arrow out of my quiver, is what I was doing. And he looked at me, but he was already locked up. And then he took off running three yards in front of me and then this little brush pile to the right he died in so I'm staring at him right now yeah I can't he's in the brush I can't get a good look at him but from what I can see he's a solid deer <laughs> so 11 a.m. worked out and hadn't seen a deer until almost 10 o'clock so yeah he was cruising wasn't on a doe at all, all by himself and Obviously, because if there would have been a doe up there, he wouldn't have done all that. So, I'm going to get down and go look at him. Those are my boys. Yeah. It's just sinking in. I know you guys want to see this deer. Okay, I'll go get the deer. Let's go. being able to share this with you guys you being able to see this how this goes down you know the reason I started videoing again was uh, there's a lot of young folks I run into and they don't really know what deer hunting is all about if they don't have somebody to take them they don't know what to expect and I just hope that some of you guys watching are interested in deer hunting and this piques your interest even more and gets you excited about it because I'll tell you what it is exciting <laughs> especially when it all works out get to take a big deer like this it's it's exciting for sure guys I was so pumped to shoot this deer he was a stud I've been hunting hard I'm tagged out you could see a little emotion in my face right here and Bailey was watching me put this video together and she goes, why are you gonna cry? I, I'm not gonna cry, but in that moment watching that deer, there's still something to it. I've said this in a few videos now, you guys can call me a sis if you want, but I just, I don't love to go kill a deer, uh, as stupid as that sounds. I mean, that's what I spend my whole life doing is focusing on how I can go kill a deer. But when I kill a deer, it's kind of heavy. You know, I'm excited because I accomplished a goal. I'm excited because I got big antlers to go on the wall. I'm excited because I got a freezer full of meat. But at the same time, I just killed this animal and it it does affect me in a way. So, you know, hey, sorry I looked like I was going to cry. I didn't know. <coughs> oh, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun for me to share. It's been a great season. Last year I didn't film my hunts, I just filmed the recoveries. This year I put in the work, I quit making excuses, I got it done. Thank you for watching. If you've been thinking about filming hunts, just understand it is a lot of work. But, if is it worth it to you? If it is, then do it. Quit making excuses, get it done. If it's not worth it to you and you feel like it ruins hunting, then don't, and that's a common experience as well. Um, you gotta make that decision. Thank you guys for watching though. I'm gonna continue to do this. I'm gonna continue to post more videos on all kinds of things. If you have any ideas or anything you wanna see, please comment below so I understand what you're wanting to know and I'll make something up.